Hi guys, it has turned into a spectacularly gorgeous early fall day here in the end times in paradise on Thursday, September 27th, 2018. We have our first taste of fall and uh, before summer gets back tomorrow, I really need to get out there in this damn garden from hell and get to work. Try to get two of my seven beds maybe cleared today. And before I get around to that, I just need to uh, finally get around to part three of my Doomer headlines from the mainstream media today. And guys, there this first couple of stories, I, I don't know. Uh, did this anyone at this point denying the fact that we are in the twilight zone and that it is a thin line between the onion and the mainstream media? Let's start out. There are actually several versions of this story. Uh, not even sure what uh, which outfit this is from talking about Milan Fashion Week, where we see, among other things, models wore three, three breasts on the runway in Milan Fashion Week. So, uh, anybody who wants to see what a picture of the end times looks like, let's go to Milan, Italy. I hope that's in focus with this beautiful young clueless fucking moron fashion, mo fashion model with three tits. Now I don't know if the tits on the right and the left are her real tits and just the one in the middle. But anyway, this is what the 20-somethings, the under 30 crowd is up to here in 2018. This is the generation we're leaving this planet to to figure out how to get us out of the mess that we made. Ah, Fashion Month. It's the time of year when designers around the world show off their most exciting new styles for the upcoming season and in some cases the most questionable styles. The front runner, gotta love that uh, pun, the front runner for this year's most surprising runway look, that would be three breasted models. Hmm, that came down the catwalk at Milan fi Fashion Week. So, Italian streetwear brand. God Can't Destroy Streetwear. That's the name of the, uh, of the brand of clothing. God Can't Destroy Streetweather decked out its models in bike shorts, sports bras, and a set of three prosthetic breasts. So they're fake. In an interview, uh, with whoever WWD is, GCDS's creative director, Guillermo Calza, revealed that the look, reminiscent of a character in Total Recall, was meant to give the show a dystopian feel. As if all of the computers in the world crashed and society was transported back to the olden days when all women wore three prosthetic breasts above their bicycle shorts. Okay, so this is the fashion designer himself trying to explain the reason he put three plastic tits on his models. <clears throat> Quote, we are a young group here. We're all under 30. And I wanted to talk to people our age about the future and get them thinking about plastics 
water shortage, and the environment. Full sustainability is impossible. No shit. And I wanted this show to be a wake-up call. He said, there you go. Okay, and with that, let's move over. What are the Jehovah's Witnesses up to this week here in the mainstream media? Again, several versions of this story. Naked Jehovah's Witnesses who kidnapped their neighbors believed Armageddon was coming. No shit. No shit. Well, I guess we've lost Sherlock. Yes, finally, someone w with an ounce of sense. Uh, naked Jehovah's Witnesses kidnapping their neighbors. Hmm. Three people charged with kidnapping their neighbors while naked were Jehovah's Witnesses who were convinced the end of the world was imminent. Hmm. According to court documents, two women and one man pleaded guilty to unlawful confinement after taking three people hostage in Ledeck, Alberta. Uh, one of the women involved also admitted to dangerous driving, I guess dangerous driving while naked. It's actually a crime in Canada for even for a man to drive without a shirt is a crime. Uh, okay, but anyway, back to the back to the story. Uh, the first, the bizarre case first made headlines almost a year ago after the Mounties were called to the scene of a car crash in an industrial park. Uh, on arrival, offers said the group of naked people were chanting Jehovah and refused to exit their vehicle. Officers added that the people in the SUV, quote, displayed extreme strength, were unaffected by pepper spray, and did not relent even when shot with tasers. Y you know, guys, when you're dealing with uh, three naked Jehovah's Witness kidnappers thinking that the end is upon us, uh, it's, it's going to take more than tasers. All right. During the three-day gathering, I don't know what gathering, uh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. The, the, the document states that the group's erratic behavior began several days earlier when they traveled to Leduc to visit relatives. During the three-day gathering there, they are believed to have refused to leave the house and barely ate. They eventually came to believe that they had lived through the Great Tribulation, a period of suffering which some evangelical Christians believes foreshadows part of the biblical end times. Yes, one of the teenagers recalled hearing, hearing screaming seeing ashes and hiding from and hiding in the bathroom from quote demons and wicked people outside during their hibernation believing they were in imminent danger the group fled the house to find safety and none of the family except the mother managed to get dressed on the way out of the house. There we go. Explain the document. Uh, they believed that they were in danger either from bad or wicked people outside or from demons. Four who were naked were changing, but they had to leave right away because it was unsafe so they left without their clothes. 
Then they made a pit stop at a neighbor's house and forced a man, his adult daughter, and her six-week son into their BMW SUV. Uh, good Lord. Uh, the victims were able to escape after the vehicle slowed down, but before the woman driving collided with another car and then crashed into a ditch. La da da, what is going on in the great state of, oh, of, of course, the, the, the great shithole state of Florida. Uh, I'm amazed this is not Texas. I assumed this was Texas, but this could explain some uh, of the clueless morons walking around Florida with uh, at least a high school education. Teacher says she was fired for giving zeros to students who did not turn in their work. There you go. A Port St. Lucie, Florida teacher claims she was fired for refusing to give students partial credit for work that they never handed in. There you go. Uh, this is Diane Tyrado. Did not even get to say goodbye to her students, so she wrote her message on a white board instead. The message, which has gone viral, uh, read, Bye kids! Mrs. Tirado loves you and wishes you the best in life. I have been fired for refusing to give you a 50% for not handing anything in. Love, Mrs. Tirado. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Tirado has been a teacher for more than 70, I'm sorry, for more than 17 years. The 52-year-old began working uh, this year as an 8th grade social studies teacher. Uh, she says she gave her students two weeks to complete an explorer's notebook project, but says some of them didn't turn anything in. I think maybe the neighbor's dog just got shot. You better stick around here, little dog. Uh, that's when she says she learned about a no zero grading policy written in red in the school's handbook stating no zeros. Lowest possible grade is 50%. Tirado says this sends the wrong message to kids. Quote, if there is nothing to grade, how can I give somebody a 50%? You know, 50% of nothing is nothing, she asked. Okay, let's move on from the great state of Florida to the shithole state of Indiana. I don't see the shithole state of Indiana showing up much here. Woman pleads guilty to letting boyfriend molest her daughter. <clears throat> a northeastern Indiana woman has admitted to charges that she allowed her boyfriend to molest her daughter, leaving the child pregnant at age 10. The 33-year-old Marion woman pleaded guilty Tuesday to charges of neglect aiding child molesting and assisting a criminal. She agreed to accept a sentence of 20 years in prison. Uh, her boyfriend was sentenced last week to 160 years after being convicted of 10 counts of child molesting. The woman admitted during Tuesday's hearing that her daughter had told her that her boyfriend 34-year-old Nicholas Dayon Thrash was molesting her, yet she continued to let him live with them. 
Hmm. The woman did not report the molestation or her daughter's pregnancy to authorities. There you go. Uh, the victim is currently in foster care and the son she gave birth to in 20, 2017 was given up for adoption. But we're going to end up in the uh, in the friendly skies. Many versions of this story. This is Time Magazine weighing in on one of the biggest stories on the planet. Man on plane tries to open the exit door in ill-advised attempt to find the bathroom. What may have been an honest mistake led to pandemonium in the air on a recent flight in India. A passenger on what he said was his first plane ride ever mis mistook the rear exit of the plane for the door to the toilet, giving his fellow passengers a fright as he tried to open the rear door while the plane was in flight. The man, a banker in his late 20s, was noticed tugging at the exit door on the flight from Delhi to Patna. When questioned by the other passengers on the plane, he told them he needed to use the washroom urgently and kept tugging at the exit door. Luckily, the door could not be opened due to the difference in air pressure in and out of the plane, but his effort was enough to spoke pandemonium on the flight. Well, guys, uh, you know, he probably did need to urgently take a shit, but this was in India. He wasn't trying to get into the bathroom. He was trying to do what he and 600 million of his fellow countrymen do every day. He needed to take a dump, God damn it, and, and he wasn't about to lower himself, you know, literally to lower himself to sit on a toilet seat. He needed to go take a shit on the ground, which is what 600 million of his fellow clueless fucking morons do in India every day in the turd world. And so he was just trying to find, you know, a tree to go shit behind if they, they still have trees in India. Do they still have trees in India? But anyway, speaking of trees, I've got a whole forest of trees out in this garden. And I got to head out into the garden, but of course I've got to, I uh, can't go through my door because my, uh, my friendly spider has claimed so. Guys, I'm finally come along to the uh, conclusion that this spider, this big ass uh, spider here uh, in the barn door, she, she must be cleaning out her nest after she eats is all I can figure. Uh, I have been here Good Lord, for 10 days now, I have never seen one sign that this spider, who looks fat and well-fed, has ever caught a bug. Several Alert Tries members have told me that she, she is getting the bugs, and then she is cleaning out her nest, and I hope that's what that's all about. Yes, little dog, are you ready to head into the garden? Smoke him if you got him, guys. We all know why. Bye, guys.